All right. Next news is uh, we're all we're talking about the takedown. Oh yes. This is the you know you know what? Yeah, let's talk about. It. This is the uh, portion of the show where we talk about all of the studios that have closed yes. in the last seven days. Yeah. Uh, we'll start with the first um, studio to close, start closing down their internal developers. Take Two Interactive, the company behind games like Grand Theft Auto V that also acquired mobile giant Zynga in 2022 in the second biggest deal in gaming history, has closed Roll7 and Intercept Games, the studios behind Roller Drone. Now it's personal. And Kerbal Space Program 2, respectively. And Ali Ali. Ali Ali, yes. All of these games were successful. Yes. <laughs> it's baffling to me. Uh, after a report from GameDeveloper.com indicated Take-Two was laying off 70 people at Intercept Games, Bloomberg released a reporting confirming that Take-Two has shuttered both Intercept Games and Roll7. The publication uh, reports that Take-Two is closing the London-based Roll7 and offering severance to staff. A notice filled with uh, a notice filed with Washington State Employee Employment de uh, Security Development indicates that Take-Two is planning to close the Seattle-based studio uh, with 70 employees, which aligns with Intercept Games' employee count and location. While Take-Two hasn't yet addressed the closures, it gave the following statement to IGN regarding layoffs and the status of Kerbal Space Program 2, uh, which launched into early access last year. On April 16th, Take-Two announced a cost reduction program to identify efficiencies across its business and to enhance the company's margin, prof, uh, margin profile while still investigating a, a still investigating still investing for growth I'm so mad i can't read mm -hmm. um as part of these efforts the company is rationalizing its pipeline and eliminating several projects in development and streamlining its organization structure uh which will eliminate headcount and reduce future hiring needs the company is not providing additional details on april 18th private division successfully launched moon studios no rest for the wicked the label continues to make updates to Kerbal Space Program 2 and plans to release Weta Workshop Game Studios Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game, uh, in the second half of 2024. Uh, so, Kerbal Space Program, is it? did it come out? It's in early access. So, so does that just mean... That just means goodbye? Like, uh, we're, yeah, we're not coming out with it? Uh, in an update on May 2nd... No, uh, it released... Uh, oh, no, it released in yeah. Access, yeah. On an update on May 2nd, uh, Take-Two Interactive, parent company behind Grand Theft Auto, uh, closed Roll7 and Kerbal Space Program, Studio Intercept Games. Uh, both of those games and many others, including the recently released No Rest of the Wicked, <coughs> were part of Private Division, an indie publishing arm under Take-Two. In a new update from GameIndustry.biz... Publication reports that Take-Two has shuttered the vast majority of private division teams in Seattle, New York, Las Vegas, and Munich, according to one of its sources. When GameIndustry.biz reached out to Take-Two for confirmation, the company issued the same statement that can be read on Game Informer's original story, which I read below. So I just uh, looked it up on uh, Steam. Where did it go? I just Oh, there it is. Uh, I looked it up on Steam, and it says, Early Access Game. Get instant access and start playing. Uh, this Early Access Game is not complete and may or may not change further. If you are not excited to play this game in its current state, then you should wait to see if the game pro prog progresses further in development. Right. So that is just a, a fucking canned thing that yeah. Steam says. You know, that's, that's yeah. the generic thing. Why early access? More than anything else, we cannot wait for players to build, fly, crash, and fly again. Okay, so this is this is from the developer. Yeah. Uh, the core pillars... Okay, this is extremely long. Approximately how long will this game be in early access? Kerbal Space Program 2 will stay in early access until we feel that the game and its full feature set are at a desired level of quality. Okay. So. That's crazy. Yeah. I would also like to point out that Roller Drone, you know, Roll 7's game, uh, was a million, uh, has uh, sold over a million copies. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's a successful game. It won the 2019 BAFTA Award for Best British Made Game. Mm -hmm. So it's an award winning game. And Take Two saw this and said, We got to stop you. 
We yeah. have to we have to we have to make sacrifices. We just bought Gearbox and Zenga, and now we're gonna punish you for it. <laughs> we're gonna punish the studio that made Will Wolf's game of the year. Let's immediately roll this into another successful studio closing. Yes. Uh, well, one successful, one not successful. Well, okay. So this is so the article I put in here, like, is about the fallout of what happened uh, with Microsoft closure. Microsoft, for those of you who don't know, they, it happened today, uh, closed down Arcane Austin, the developers of Red Paul, uh, Redfall, uh, Tango Gameworks, developers of Hi-Fi Rush, um, as well as Alpha Dogs, the developer of Mighty Doom and Roundhouse Games, which is now being merged with ZeniMax Online to work in the Ever Scrolls Online salt mines. Okay, so they're not closing completely. They're just rolling into it. No, different. they got Vicarious Visioned. Where they yeah, got, they got rolled into yeah. something else. Yeah. Which is probably, I don't, probably I, a fate worse than death. Honestly. Well, I don't hate that as much as just closing and firing everybody. True. You know, because yeah. then it's... If they take a company and roll all of its staff into another company, it's like, okay, well, it's just a different name then. Right. It's like they, they can still work on those games eventually in the future. They just might have to do something for now, you know? Right. But when they take a game and when they take a company and close it for good, that tells me that those games are never being made again. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to point out this tweet by uh, Shinji Mikami. Oh yeah. It literally just says Tango closed. Dad. Yeah. Shinji Mikami, the founder of Tango GameWorks. Yeah. Uh, worked on the Evil Within games and uh, Ghostwire Tokyo and Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, and he left after Hi-Fi. Rush. Right after Hi-Fi yeah. Rush. Yeah, and that. Should have been a sign. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like uh, they probably closed because they, uh, or he left because they were, they he might have saw that it was going to be closed and they weren't really working on anything after this yeah. or something. I I don't know, but uh, it's ridiculous because uh, I I know why Arcane. I mean, I don't know why Arcane closed because they were a very talented studio that made one bad game. Yeah, you know. Well, it's not all of Arcane. It was their, it's just their Austin division. Because oh, okay. Leon is still in business. They're making uh, Blade. And right. They, there's right. another There's another main studio that I think made the Dishonored games. They're making something else. Okay, so they yeah. only closed the one that made Redfall. Uh, yes. All right, well, I but understand. remember, <laughs> they didn't want to make Redfall. I... Don't know if I believe that. Why don't you? Why wouldn't you believe that? Because we only heard about that after Redfall came out, and everybody already hated it. Well, yeah, obviously. Like, <laughs> if if Redfall was successful, they would have been like, "This is our idea. You, but we I wanted mean, to do this." You look at Redfall, and you look at like the design of the game, and like mm -hmm. it's clear that nobody wanted to make the game. Yeah. And Phil Spencer even came out and said, "Though I got words about Phil." You know, he even came out and said on the X cast, he's like, they didn't want to make the game. <laughs> and like, we basically didn't step in to stop them. So, right. but I'm but, not so upset about that arcane studio closing because I mean, I, it's still sad, but Redfall was a bad game. Right. But Hi that doesn't mean they should be punished for it. Right. But Hi-Fi Rush was an amazing game. Hi-Fi Rush was an amazing Pretty game. Pretty much everything Tango made was great. Yeah. And like, they got... You know, it was critically acclaimed. According to Microsoft, it sold well, but apparently, like, not well enough. Yeah, they were praising how good Hi-Fi Rush did and how yeah. they were like, we got to release these smaller games more often. This game's doing really good. Yeah. And uh, instead, they're like, fuck you. Goodbye. Yeah. It's ridiculous. There has to be more going on here. Maybe a lot more people oh, I know left. Exact, I know exactly what's going on. They what? spent $70 billion to buy Activision. And, so, but and now, the, like... They need to, like, save money here and yeah, there. Yeah, but of all of the studios to close, why are, why are these specifically? Like, there's got to be... Well, I I guess maybe they saw that they weren't working on anything after Hi-Fi Rush, and they were just like, all right, fuck you guys. They've got to be working on something. Or maybe they were early in development well, on something, and in, they could sever according it. According to this article I put in here, Arcane Austin was working on stuff. They were working on updates for Redfall. That is never going to come well, out. That was. I They're feel working like that's on a major cause. updates. They're working on an offline mode so you can play the game offline. Because Garen, fuck it to you, those servers are going to go offline real soon. Yeah. And now you're never going to be able to play this game again. That's uh, a DLC game packs that people had already pre-purchased. That's already a game that they're not going to make money on. Yeah. If it's already gone. But there were there there were DLC packs that players could pre-purchase. Right. You know, back 
when it first came out. Anyone who bought the Bite Back Edition for $100 that included the Hero Pass will be eligible to receive the value of the upgrade, Arcane said. People who played Redfall via Game Pass were able to buy the upgrade that indicate that included the Bite Back Edition for $33.50. The studio also clarified that Redfall servers will remain online, but the game will receive no further updates to everyone who supported our work um, from our Austin studio over the years. Thank you. Thank you for spending time in our worlds and making them your own, the team said. Uh, Arcane Leon is staying open and will continue to make the Blade game for Marvel. So yeah, they had more content planned, paid DLC planned that people actively paid for, and now like nothing. Yeah, yeah. No, it sucks that they yeah. that they close. It it sucks for the two Redfall fans. <laughs> <laughs> but that I can at least see from the perspective of a CEO at fucking Xbox. I could see why they would want to close that. It doesn't make sense why they would want to close Tango Gameworks. Right. Unless maybe they weren't working on much or a lot of the people that were in charge at Tango Gameworks left. That's why I'm saying there has maybe there's or, something else that was going on inside. Or maybe Hi Fi Rush didn't sell very well. And that's why they had they to put it. They straight up said that it did and that they want to put more effort into games like this. But. I'm I, I'm at the point where I don't think I believe anything Phil Spencer says anymore. He spent the entire Xbox One generation just trying to rebuild the good name of Xbox, and he did the best he could. But now you look at like all the fallout of his decisions, acquiring studios, not acquiring studios, but not like putting out games from these studios he acquired. The Xbox One generation went pretty much the entire generation without a killer first party uh, game. Now the Xbox Series generation is in the same exact boat. The one game that they had that could have done it, Redfall, was a disaster. You know, Halo Infinite didn't live up to expectations. You can't just keep releasing Forza and expect that to coast through a, a generation. Here's an article that says Microsoft pleaded with Hi-Fi Rush's success plans to please with Hi-Fi Rush success plans to reinvest in Tango Gameworks. And then uh, there was another slide. Where where'd it go? Oh, Aaron Greenberg tweeted, Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. We couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered Mm -hmm. with this surprise release. So let's not, I mean, Phil Spencer still uh, in charge and and is uh, the the major culprit here, but there were other, there were other people at Microsoft saying the same bullshit. Right. You know? Well, yeah, they have to. They'll have to save face. You they, know? Don't, they don't have to say that the game is amazing and they want to reinvest in games like this and then completely... Because this is premeditated. They, they knew this was going right. to be... Clo- it's not like they woke up today and were like, oh, we're closing Tango. Yeah. They had to have known for months. Probably, yeah. So. Also, this means we're not getting a Switch version of Hi-Fi Rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not at this rate. So... uh it, it it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, I understand uh, buying up a bunch of studios and then closing what's not working, but there's things that's working here. Roll yeah. 7 had a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Tango Gameworks had a lot of great stuff. Doesn't make any sense even, to me. Why even like those. Arcane Austin, yes, they made, Red, they made Redfall. It wasn't a good game, but keep them open. They can support... Uh, Arcane Leon, they can they can try again with another game. Yeah. Like Microsoft has the money; they're a three trillion dollar company. Yeah. They can afford to like give them, you know, a couple million dollars to keep the lights on for a little bit to try and make something worthwhile, worthy of the overall Arcane name. Unless there's something internal going on that we don't know about that the company just kind of fell apart. I think what the problem is is that Microsoft in terms of a game standpoint is like they're not doing so well and they're trying to find all these other ways to be you know profitable in the games industry and you the way they wound up being profitable in the games industry was buying activision yeah. <laughs> you it, know i understand restructuring all of the stuff that you just bought but uh again closing the closing the studios that made the good games is insane yeah like hi-fi rush was like the good and xbox that's the thing. game last if you're year. closing the studios that make good games you know, who's going to make your games then? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah, I don't, I, I, I would love to know more about what's going on yeah. on the inside here because something's fucked up. Yeah. 